ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد then to continue with al aqida at tahawiya the creed ka compiled by Imam Abu Ja'far al-Tahawi rahimahullah with the explanation of Shaykh Salih al-Fawzan hafizahullah then last time we had the two points 212 and 213 and with regard to them who can remember what is held by the people of the Sunnah concerning gathering and being united how do we hold the matter of gathering and being united? That's no excuse. It's something then commanded by Allah. Yeah, no. No, it's something true, something correct and true. Something right. We also had the point with regard to what basis should this be upon? The gathering and uniting of the Muslims, upon what basis? Upon any old basis or upon a certain basis? Yeah. As the brother mentioned, it should be upon the habla, habla, the rope of Allah, the habla Allah. As was mentioned in the ayah, وَاَتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا And cling of you with the explanation, ayah from Surah Ali Imran, and cling all of you together to the rope of Allah. Who can remember the explanation, the two explanations that Shaykh al-Fawzan mentioned for habla Allah, the rope of Allah that we are to gather upon? And both of which were, we heard were authentically reported from the Salaf. Who can remember the two explanations of the rope of Allah? Um, yeah. yeah. One of, some of the Salaf explained the rope of Allah to mean the Quran. And some of them explained is the rope of Allah to mean Islam. And of course, there being no contradiction between the two. And as the Shaykh mentioned, then we unite upon the book and upon the Sunnah. Upon the Sunnah which Allah commanded in His book that we cling to. The Sunnah of Allah's Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where we are ordered to accept whatever came from the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So our basis for unity is a unity upon the book and the Sunnah. What do we hold concerning differing, disuniting and splitting? Do we hold that disunity is a mercy? Or what do we hold about disunity and splitting? Uh, that it's a, an adhab, it's a punishment from Allah. Just as uniting is a mercy from Allah, a rahmah, then likewise splitting and disunity amongst the Muslims is a punishment. It's not something we're happy about, it's something that happens. It's not something that we're happy to see happening. We also had a point with regard to unity upon a basis other than the book and the sunnah. What do we say with regard to, and what did Sheikh Al-Fawzan mention, with regard to unity, but unity upon the basis of a common madhab, or unity upon the basis of a common party? Uh, some Muslims get together and form a party and then they have unity upon that basis. What did Sheikh Al-Fawzan mention with regard to this unity? There seems to be three, three or four people answering all the questions and nobody else. Anyway. Yeah. 
that this is not a correct basis for unity, this is not permissible. It's not permissible to unite upon this basis, upon any other basis except the basis of the book and the sunnah. And this unity will only lead to splitting of the Muslims. That a few Muslims will gather upon one party, meaning a few Muslims will gather upon one party, a few Muslims will gather upon a different party, a few Muslims will gather on another party, or a different madhab, another madhab, another madhab, which will not lead to unity, it will lead to further splitting. So as the Shaykh al-Fawzan mentioned, this unity is not permissible to establish unity upon that basis. We then had a point with regard to ikhtilaf, differing, and Shaykh al-Fawzan mentioned that differing is of two types. Who can remember, or two categories? Who can remember the two different categories of differing? The first type of differing was in aqidah, and the second in matters of fiqh. Who can remember with regard to the first type? What did Shaykh al mention with regard to the first type of differing? Differing in aqidah. Yeah, it's not permissible. La Jews. It is not permissible. This will lead, differing in aqidah will lead to enmity, and fighting, and so on. Inescapably, it will lead to that. And it's not permissible. With regard to the second type of differing, differing in uh, matters of fiqh, then Shaykh al Fawzan mentioned as this as being a permissible type of differing, differing in matters of fiqh, which are areas where it's correct to make ijtihad. Not just any old difference in fiqh, that somebody differs in fiqh, somebody differs in fiqh based on any old basis, based on ignorance or contradicting what the Muslims say. No that differing in matters of fiqh, which are legitimate areas of ijtihad. And he made a condition for the permissibility of this differing. What was that condition that he mentioned? We don't just say it's okay for Muslims to differ in fiqh, full stop. He made a condition there. What was the condition that Shaykh al Fawzan mentioned? That it is not done upon the basis of ta'assub, blindly clinging to an opinion in the light of ev in, or against the evidence. If that's the case, then that you mention it's not permissible. If it's, differ if it's differing, which is based upon, because someone is blindly clinging to an opinion, irrespective of evidence from the book and the sunnah, then that is not permissible. We don't just say it's okay, he can differ. Rather, as the Sheikh al-Fawzan mentioned, that type of differing, if it's based on ta'assub, just purely clinging to an opinion, even though evidence is against it, that's not permissible. But as long as it's differing in a matter of fiqh, based upon, where we're in an area of ijtihad, where it's correct to make ijtihad, and then the, there's difference of opinion about that, there's no problem with that condition. That is not just blindly sticking to an opinion, irrespective of evidence. We also had a very important definition of Al-Islam, of the religion of Al-Islam. Who can remember the definition of Al-Islam? It's something that we should all be able to remember. said it is submission huwa al istislamu lillahi bi tawhid wal inqiyad lahu bi ta'a wal khulus min al shirk to submit to allah with tawhid and to yield to him with obedience and to free oneself from shirk that was the definition shaykh al fawza mentioned that was mentioned by shaykh al islam ibn abdul wahhab and he quoted it as being the definition given by shaykh al islam ibn taymiyyah Contrary to what the people, as we constantly keep hearing, the word Islam means peace, as if the word Islam it means peace. I and mean, of course, the, even in the language, it does not mean peace. It's derived from the same root, but it doesn't mean it. It means al Islam, submission. We 
He also had a point with regard to the, the different messengers who came throughout the ages. What was mentioned with regard to how many different religions were sent down throughout the ages. All these different messengers came and they had different laws. How many different religions therefore came down? Well, despite the fact that they had different laws, each one had different laws, their religion, the religion of each of them, was one and the same. In Islam, with the definition, with the definition that we just heard, submission to Allah with Tawheed, yielding to Him with obedience, and freeing oneself from shirk. This was the religion of every single messenger. And as for the fact that they had different laws, then there were different laws and different details, as the Sheikh said, suitable for each time. And then we had a point with regard to how many, how many religions are valid at pre uh, in the present day. How many religions are, pre are at present valid? Well, these questions sound, sound very easy and the answers sound very easy. It's quite surprising that some people are under the, grand, the great illusion that there, are, there is more than one religion which is at present acceptable. That is, they, they, those people who say that there are other religions, other Abrahamic faiths as they call them, Christianity and Judaism and so on, that these are acceptable religions. These are not acceptable religions to Allah. After the sending of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa the only religion that is acceptable is the religion of Islam. Then with regard to the next point, then Imam al-Tahawi, rahimahullah, <coughs> And he continued with the point that's numbered here as point 214. Qala Allah Ta'ala, Inna Dina Inda Ta'ala, Waraditu Lakumul Islam Adina. He said, Allah the Most High said, Inna Dina Inda Allah Islam. The ayah from Surah Ali Imran. The third surah, ayah 19, with the explanation, the religion with Allah is Islam. And he, the Most High, said, وَرَضِيتُ لَكُمُ الْإِسْلَامَ دِينَ The part of the ayah from Surah Al-Ma'idah, the fifth surah, ayah 3, with the explanation, and I am pleased for you with Islam as your religion. Sheikh Fawzan said, so it is the deen, so it is the religion which he is pleased with for his servants. From the sending of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam right until the establishment of the last hour. With regard to the next point, where Al-Tahawi, rahimahullah, continues, وَهُوَ بَيْنَ الْغُلُوِّ وَالتَّقْصِيرِ And it lies between extremism and falling short. And it lies between going beyond the limits and falling short. Shaykh al-Fawzan said, so Al-Islam is in the middle between Al-Ghulu, extremism, or going beyond the limits. And Shaykh Al-Fawzan explained Al-Ghulu. He said, and it is addition, a ziyada, and a tashdeed. Severity and excessiveness. So Islam is in the middle between this, between ghulu, which is addition and severity and excessiveness, and between at-taqseer, falling short, and that is failing to give the due right. So the religion of Islam is between or 
rather. He said, so is the religion of Islam is wasat. It's in the middle. There is no excessiveness and severity in it and no slackness and laxity regarding it. There is no excessiveness and severity about it nor any slackness and laxity regarding it. No, no going beyond the limits and no falling short of what is required. He said, so each of these two ends is something blameworthy. And the middle way is good. The middle way is what is good. And, the, and therefore he, the one free of all imperfections, said, يا أهل الكتاب لا تغلو في دينكم غير الحق سورة المائدة the fifth surah ayah 77 with the explanation O people of the book do not go beyond the limits in your religion with other than the truth and Sheikh Al-Fawzan said giving further evidence he said and he عليه الصلاة والسلام said هلك المتنطعون قالها ثلاثا he said he the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said those who go to extremes are destroyed he said it three times in a footnote they mention the hadith being reported by Muslim and it's a hadith of Abdullah ibn, Ab uh, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu. Then Shaykh of Hawzan explained who is this term here, halak al mutanatti'oon, the mutanatti'oon are destroyed. Shaykh of Hawzan said, and the mutanatti'oon are those, the mutashaddidun, those who are over severe, those who go to extremes, in the affairs of the religion. Then he said, quoting a further evidence in this regard, and when a group came in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a small group of people came in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and one of them said, I will fast and I will not refrain from fasting. And another one said, As for myself, then I will pray and I will not sleep. And a third one said, As for myself, then I will not eat meat. And a fourth one said, As for me, then I will keep away from the women. In other words, keep away from relations with the wives. So he, alayhi salatu wassalam, said, Ama inni atqakum lillah wa akhshakum lillah wa inni asum wa uftir wa usalli wa anam wa atazawwaju nisa wa akuru laham faman ragiba an sunnati falaysa minni. That in response, <coughs> he, alayhi salatu wassalam, said, Indeed, I am the one from amongst you who is the most dutiful to Allah, has the most taqwa of Allah, and who has the most fear of Allah. And yet I fast and I refrain from fasting. And I pray and sleep. And I pray and I sleep. And I marry women. And, and I eat meat. So whoever turns away from my sunnah, then he is not from me. <coughs> then he is not from me. In a footnote they mention this hadith is reported by Al-Bukhari as hadith 5063 and also reported by Muslim. 
and supported by as a side point a number of others as well and Nasai, Imam Ahmad, Ibn Sa'ad and others as well and as for the the man who came and say and said I will not eat meat then that's contained in the narration of Muslim and the narration of an Nasai and you'll find in all these references the answer of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he gave the answer indeed I am the one from amongst you who is most dutiful to Allah and has the most fear of Allah and yet I fast and I refrain from fasting and I pray and I sleep and I marry women so whoever turns away from my sunnah then he is not from me then Shaykh al-Fawzan continued commenting upon this hadith and said commenting upon the practice of those people who came and said they were going to do this and this and this Shaykh al-Fawzan said since this is excessiveness which has not been commanded by Allah he the one free of all imperfections said ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu la tuharrimu tayyibati ma ahalla Allah lakum surah al-ma'ida the fifth surah ayah 87 with the explanation O oh, you who believe do not forbid the good and pure things which Allah has made lawful for you Shaykh al-Fawzan said meaning doing so as religion doing so as religion don't do that he said and he the one free of all imperfections said wala ta'tadu Surah Al-Ma'idah, the same surah, the same continuation of the same ayah, ayah 80, 87. With the explanation, and do not go beyond the due limits. Shaykh Al-Fawzan said, so the ayah covers both extremes. So the religion is in the middle. In other words, this ayah forbids both of these things going beyond the limit and falling short of what is required then Imam Tahawi rahimahullah continued wa bayna tashbihi wa ta'atil and <coughs> and between tashbih likening the creation to the creator and ta'atil, negating Allah's attributes. In continuation about the religion, that the religion, in the last point, is between extremism and falling short, and the religion is between tashbih, likening the creation to the creator, and ta'atil, negating Allah's attributes. In between, the, deen, the true deen lies in between these two extremes. Shaykh al-Fawzan said, meaning in aqidah, in creed and belief, it is between ta'atil, negation, and tashbih, likening the creation to the creator. It lies between negation of the names and attributes of Allah, and between likening the creation to the creator and the aqidah, the creed and belief is in the middle in between these two extremes and the shaykh said so the mu'attila those who deny the attributes those who deny Allah's attributes, the mu'attila they went beyond the limits in tanzih, in declaring Allah free of imperfections. To such an extent that they denied the names and the attributes. And he comments upon the opposite extreme. Whereas the mushabbiha, those who liken the creator to the creation, he said, whereas the mushabbiha, they went beyond the limits in affirming 
to such an extent that they likened Allah to his creation. And the correct aqidah is in the middle. He, the one free of all imperfections, said, لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ Surah Ashura, the 42nd Surah, Ayah 11, with the explanation, there is nothing like him. There is nothing like Allah. This is a refutation of the Mushabbiha. This is a refutation of those who liken Allah to the creation. <coughs> then he quotes the next part of the ayah, وَهُوَ السَّمِيءُ الْبَصِيرُ same ayah, ayah 11 from Surah Ashura. وَهُوَ السَّمِيءُ الْبَصِيرُ And he, Allah, is the all-hearing, the all-seeing. This contains a refutation of the Mu'attila, those who deny Allah's attributes. In other words, the first part of the ayah is a denial of the Mushabbiha, those who liken Allah to his creation. And the second part of the ayah is a refutation of the Mu'attila, those who deny Allah's attributes. And he said, and we, the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, we affirm whatever Allah has affirmed for himself. From names and attributes. Or rather he said, we affirm for Allah whatever, we affirm for him whatever Allah has affirmed for himself. And whatever his messenger affirmed for him. From names and attributes. And we do not negate them, and we do not deny them. And we do not liken Allah to anyone from His creation. Rather we say, the names of Allah and His attributes befit Him, He, the one free of all imperfections. And even though these names and attributes are found in humans, however, the kafir, how they are, is different. For the attribute will be in accordance with the one who has the attribute. In other words, Sheikh al is just a, a, a side point to clarify. And Shaykh al is making the point, as we've, had, as we've had before, that Allah has certain attributes, attributes which are found also in the creation. As an example, they mention, for example, the fact that Allah, that Allah has a hand. Allah has two hands, and the creation have hands. But how they are is different. The hand of, of the Creator is, is different to the hand of the creation. As he said, because the attribute follows on from the one who carries the attribute. So the hand and the face and the rest of the attributes of the Creator are as befit His Majesty, or as befit Him. Whereas the attributes of the creation are attributes which befit them, not like the attributes of the Creator. I mean, they, do, they befit the creation's deficiency and so on. So the attributes that Allah has attributes which befit him and the creation have attributes which befit them. Then with regard to the next point, then Imam At-Tahawi rahimahullah continues, وَبَيْنَ الْجَبْرِ وَالْقَدْرِ That the deen is between, he said, and between fatalism, al-jabr, and denying pre-decree, al-qadr. And between, I mean the deen is, and between fatalism, al-jabr, and denying pre-decree, al-qadr. Again, as we had before, the word here just mentions pre-decree, al-qadr, and what is meant by that is the denial, is those who deny the pre-decree. Rahmatullah. <laughs> Shaykh al-Fawzan, Hafizullah, said, the position of the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah lies in the middle 
between the Jabariya and the Qadariya. So the Jabariya, the fatalists or something like that, the Jabariya, they go beyond the limits in affirming pre-decree to the extent that they deprive the person of any choice and free will. They go beyond, go beyond the limits in affirming Al-Qadr, pre-decree, to such an extent that they deprive the person of any ikhtiyar, any choice or free will. So they say, the person has no, rahmakullah, they say the person has no choice or free will. So his actions are all forced upon him. So he is just a tool or a machine, ala, like a tool or a machine, moved by the pre-decree. <coughs> so his prayers and his fasting and his deeds are things which he has no choice or free, or free will about. So he moves just as a machine moves. And this is a false and futile position. This is what the Jabariya say, and the Sheikh Fawzan said, and this is a false and futile position. Then he mentions the opposite extreme, the Qadariya, the deniers of the pre-decree, the deniers of Qadr. He said, and the Qadariya went beyond the limits in affirming the choice and free will of the person. To such an extent that they denied pre-decree, Al-Qadr. To the extent that they declared that the servant is independent in his actions. And they take him out from the wish and will of Allah. And that the servant has independent will. So they say, or that, so they said, he is the one, he, the person himself, is the one who creates his own actions. And Allah has nothing to do with them. And this is the position of the Mu'tazila. In this, this position of denial of pre-decree in this regard, and the fact that they, they, they're saying that the people create their own actions, this is the position of the Mu'tazila. Then Shaykh Fawzan said, mentioning what is correct, and as for the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, then they take the middle position in this matter, and they say that the servant has choice and will. He does actions by choice and free will. However, he cannot exit from the ordainment and pre-decree of Allah. So his actions are created by Allah. But they are his deeds. They are the deeds of the person himself. And they are what he has earned. They are what he earns. So he, the person, is the one who commits the sins <coughs> and does the acts of obedience. However, Allah is the one who decrees. Allah is the one who decrees. So therefore, <coughs> I mean, because the person is the one who, actually, who does his own actions, he said, so therefore, the person is punished for his crimes and rewarded for his obedience. And if he did this without choice, then he would not attain reward and would not be punished. And he gives a couple of examples that make that clear. 
if a person I mean if a person acted just like a robot, then he would not be liable to get him reward for those deeds or punishment. The Sheikh said. So the insane person or the young child are not held accountable. And likewise Al Mukrah, the person who is forced and compelled, who has no choice in something, he is not held accountable. Then at Tahawi Rahimahullah brings the next point. al Amni wal Iyas and between feeling secure and despairing. In this religion, the deen is between feeling secure and despairing. And we already had something in that regard, just to remind us as point under point one hundred and thirty five. Sheikh of Hawzan said Likewise, this is from the creed and belief of the Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. And it is in the middle between Al Aman, feeling secure from Allah's plan, and between despairing of His mercy. So they hope for the mercy of Allah, but they do not feel safe and secure from Allah's plan and nor from punishment and being put to trial. However, they do not despair of the mercy of Allah. So they combine having khawf, fear, and raja, hope. And this is what the prophets were upon. Combining fear and hope, both. He the, he, the one free of all imperfections, said, إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا يُسَارِعُونَ فِي الْخَيْرَاتِ وَيَدْعُونَنَا, رغب ويدعوننا رَغَبًا وَرَهَبًا وَكَانُوا لَنَا خَاشِعِينَ Surah Al-Anbiya, the 21st Surah, Ayah 90. And the ayah is in the context of Zakariya and his wife and his son Yahya. Prophet Zakariya and his wife and the Prophet Yahya. With the explanation, they used to hasten, they used to hasten to do good deeds and they called upon us with eagerness for reward and with fear of punishment. And they were humbly submissive to us. Sheikh Fawzan said, so they were the prophets so their fear of Allah did not lead them to despairing of the mercy of Allah. He, the one free of all imperfections, said, إِنَّهُ لَا يَيْأَسُ مِنْ رَوْحِ اللَّهِ إِلَّا الْقَوْمُ الْكَافِرِينَ إِلَّا الْقَوْمُ الْكَافِرُونَ إِنَّهُ لَا يَيْأَسُ مِنْ رَوْحِ اللَّهِ إِلَّا الْقَوْمُ الْكَافِرُونَ Surah Yusuf, the 12th Surah, Ayah 87, with the explanation, None despairs of the mercy of Allah except for the unbelieving people. He said, and he the perfect said, وَمَنْ يَقْنَطُ مِنْ رَحْمَةِ رَبِّهِ إِلَّا الضَّالُّونَ Surah Al-Hijr, the 15th Surah, Ayah 56, with the explanation, And who despairs of the mercy of his Lord except for those who are astray? And Shaykh Fawzan said, and also their hope in Allah does not lead them to feeling safe and secure from Allah's plan. He, the one free of all imperfections, said, Afa aminu makrallah, fala ya'manu makrallahi illa al qawmul khasirun. Surah Al A'raf, the seventh surah, ayah 99. With the explanation, do they feel safe and secure from the plan of Allah? Then no one feels safe and secure from the plan of Allah except for the people who are the losers. Al Tabari said, the Halikun, the ones who are destroyed. 
And then Shaykh al-Fawzan said, And Ibrahim, the father of the prophets, he said, Wajnubni wa baniya an na'abud al-asnam. Surah Ibrahim, ayah 35. With the explanation that Ibrahim alayhi salam said, making supplication, And keep me and my children far away from worshipping the idols. Shaykh al-Fawzan said, So Ibrahim did not feel safe and secure regarding himself. Rather, he feared being put to trial. He feared being put to trial because he was a human. So therefore, a person should not feel safe and secure for himself and say, I am a righteous man. Rather, he should fear for himself but without despairing of the mercy of Allah. He, the Most High, said, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ وَأَنِيبُوا إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ وَأَسْلِمُوا لَهُ Surah Az-Zumar, the 39th Surah, Ayahs 53 to 54, with the explanation, Say, O my servants, who have greatly wronged themselves, do not despair of the mercy of Allah. Allah forgives all sins. Indeed, He is the one who forgives extensively and has mercy. And turn repentantly upon obedience to your Lord and turn repentantly and in obedience to your Lord and submit to him. Sheikh Fawzan said, so what is obligatory upon the person is that he carries out the means towards mercy. He carries out the means to acquire a rahmah, the mercy. And they are, I mean the means towards, which lead towards Allah's mercy, are at tawbah wa islamul waj lillahi subhanahu. And they are these means which lead to Allah's mercy, Allah's having mercy upon the person. They are repentance at tawbah and submitting one's face to Allah, the one free of all imperfections. Then he will attain the mercy of Allah. For the mercy of Allah is close to the muhsineen, to the doers of good who perfect, who perfect their worship. And al-ihsan, worshipping in, in a perfect manner, is a means, is a means to mercy. This is the position of the Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. And it lies between the position of the Murji'ah, those who say, sins will not harm a person who has Iman. And that if a person is a believer in his heart, then sins will not harm him. This is what they say, this is what the Murji'ah say. That sins will not harm a person who has Iman. And they say, and if a person is a believer in his heart, then sins will not harm him. And we had something before under point 132. Then Shaykh of Awzang said, commenting upon this saying of the Murji'ah, so these people, they feel safe and secure from the plan of Allah. And they say, that actions do not enter into the reality of Iman. So a person can enter paradise even if he has done no deeds whatsoever. This is the saying of the Murji'ah. And this position has corrupted the world. So Shaykh Fawzan describes what the saying has amounted to. This saying has corrupted the world. 
So the people have detached themselves from the religion because of it. And they have said, since we are, since we are going to enter paradise, then we have no need of deeds. We have no need of actions. So therefore they do whatever they wish. Shaykh commenting upon many, many people in this world. They're acting upon the principle of the murjia. If you've got iman in your heart, then that's it. You're in, you're in paradise. Deed, any, any evil deeds that you do, they won't, they won't harm you. Then the Shaykh said, and between, mention the opposite extreme, and between those, the wa'idiyya, those who insist that the textual threats must be enforced, the khawarij, those who declare people to be unbelievers, kafirs, because of major sins which are less than shirk. And they hold enforcing the textual threat which Allah has mentioned upon those who disobey him. For Allah has threatened the disobedient ones. However, he said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَغْفِرُ أَنْ يُشْرَكَ بِهِ وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ Surah Al-Nisa, the fourth surah, ayah 48. With the explanation, Allah does not forgive that shirk be committed along with him. But he forgives whatever is less than that to whomever he wishes. Sheikh Al-Fawzan said, so they mean the people who commit major sins. Contrary to what the Khawarij say. He said, so they are beneath the wish and will of Mashia. And this is the position of the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. And it is the middle position. And the true saying, or rather he said, the, the true saying is with the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Those who take the middle position between feeling safe and secure and having hope, and between fearing and despairing. And therefore they say, Hope and fear for a person are like the two wings of a bird. And both wings must be sound. And likewise, fear and hope. If one of them is defective, then he, it will fall. Then if one's defective, the person will fall or the bird will fall. So the person must be justly balanced just as the two wings of the bird are justly balanced. And the last point that we'll take, insha'Allah here, point 219 that At-Tahawi rahimahullah said, a small point, or a small explanation, فَهَذَا دِينُنَا وَاَتِقَادُنَا ظَاهِرًا وَبَاطِنًا وَنَحْنُ بُرَاءٌ وَنَحْنُ بَرَاءٌ إِلَى اللَّهِ مِنْ كُلِّ مَنْ خَالَفَ الَّذِي ذَكَرْنَاهُ so this is our religion and our creed and belief, outwardly and inwardly. And we free ourselves before Allah of everyone who opposes what we have mentioned and made clear. Shaykh Al-Fawzan said, meaning that which we have mentioned in this creed from the start of it to the end. It is our religion, we the Muslims. And we free ourselves from everyone who opposes it, since it is the true creed and belief. And whatever opposes it is batil, is false and futile. Alhamdulillah wa ala Muhammad. And we'll leave the last section in the book until next time, inshallah. Any points of clarification?
with regard to the ayah, إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا يُسَعْرِئُونَ فِي الْخَيْرَاتِ The Tabari mentions, this is clear from the context, it's with regard to the context of Zakariya, Prophet Zakariya and his wife, and with regard to Yahya, Prophet Yahya. Sheikh al I mentioned this is the way of the Prophets, not just restricted to them, this is the way of all the Prophets. That they hasten to hasten upon good, upon fear and hope. Eagerly hoping for Allah's reward, fearing Allah's punishment, and khashi'een, humbly submitting to Allah. With regard to the difference between Al-Qadr, Al-Qadha and Al-Qadr, then some of the people, I think we had this point a long time ago, some of the people of knowledge, they say that they're one and the same. Al-Qadr and Al-Qadha refer to the same thing, Allah's pre-decree. And some of the people of knowledge, they say that Al-Qadr is that which Allah pre-decreed would, would occur. Whereas Al-Qadha describes that which actually occurs, when it actually occurs. Allah's ordainment means that which occurs when it's seen to occur. Then it's to be said about it, this is Allah's qadha. It's what is ordained is going, it, it happens when it happens. Allahu alam. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك جزاك الله خيرا